Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and today we're looking at the Tronxy X5, with it, which is a 3D printer I got in quite a few months back, and it's by no means a new printer on the market. It's probably been out for at least a year or so now, um, and there's actually a completely updated version of it, which is the Tronxy X5S, uh, which goes for about $350. This machine you can actually pick up for $200, um, but the Tronxy X5S, which is the newer version of it is a completely overhauled version which is like a core XY while well, this machine is more on the long lines of something like the DaVinci style printer or like an Ultimaker style printer where the bed goes up and down and the hot end goes left and right and back and forth on the um, on the X and Y axis. So the reason why I wanted to get this printer in was primarily because I wanted to take a break from Prusa style machines. Um, that's primarily what I've been building on the channel and although they are fantastic, I thought it would be fun to change it up. So when I saw this printer and I saw the price tag on it, I figured, what the heck, this is a really cheap printer, let's give it a go. And I liked what I saw, which was basically an aluminum, all aluminum extrusion. Uh, that's what makes up this 3D printer and a decent sized build area. So those were the first things that kind of caught my eye in terms of um, things that I thought would make this a kind of neat printer. So I really didn't have too much expectations on this 3D printer. There wasn't a lot of content available on it and there's still not a whole ton. Um, I know that Jatman did a video on this and another, uh, another one or two YouTubers did. And the one big thing that I kept hearing about was this bed being extremely wobbly. Um, I'll get a close up so you can see it, but up and down and left and right, it's just extremely wobbly. The only thing holding it, the only thing basically holding it in place are these two little aluminum bars that connect it to the lead screw and the two smooth rods. Um, if it had another set of smooth rods and lead screw on this side, that would completely eliminate that wobble, um, but there is quite a lot of it. So um, I knew that going into this printer um, and I wasn't exactly too sure what to expect. So I kind of went into it just hoping for the best, but potentially being prepared for the worst. So originally I'd planned on building this 3D printer completely on stream. I unboxed everything, laid it all out nicely, and one night after work, I think on a Friday, I started assembling this 3D printer. I spent about three to four hours, I believe, and got literally nowhere. Um, this 3D printer didn't come with a um, any kind of paper guide. It had a little SD card with a PDF on it. So I plugged that into my computer and was able to pull up the PDF. The main issue I ran into was the labeling. So there is... Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 or so aluminum extrusions on here and quite a few of them are close in size to each other but not exact in size to each other and there was um, often times in that build PDF where it didn't actually tell me which of the uh, aluminum extrusions to use so I had to kind of guess like oh I think it looks like this is the longer one going here and so that caused me to question a lot of things and have to take things apart and put things back together to basically fix the mistakes I made due to poor labeling in the um, build manual. So that was a big, that was a big headache. Um, and again, on top of that, I was streaming, so I was talking a lot and not giving it my full attention. So I then ended the stream and decided that the next day I would finish it on stream again. Uh, well, what I ended up doing was I woke up really, really early and probably put in another four, four-ish hours or so, um, but off stream and I was able to complete the assembly uh, it went a lot quicker when I wasn't streaming, clearly. Uh, but yeah, the, it still was a big headache in terms of trying to figure out what the hell went where because of poor labeling in the instruction manual. So once I had this thing completely assembled, I went ahead and printed out a little calibration cube on stream, which turned out decent. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. So I, after that, went ahead and tried to um, do a bit of a bigger print, and I printed this guy right here, uh, Bowser, which I thought was a really awesome model. and the print seemed like it was going okay, then about halfway through it, layers started shifting, like terribly shifting. And so I, at the time, didn't have a spool holder on this thing, so I thought that maybe it was from the direct drive extruder having to pull the weight of the spool um, that was on the ground that was causing it to maybe skip steps. So I mounted the spool temporarily on top of the printer, restarted the print, and this time it was skipping steps even worse than before. So at that point I knew like, okay, this is clearly not a issue with the weight of the spool. So I was pretty frustrated for quite a while actually because they were decently long prints and I was almost on the verge of like saying, man, this printer is like, you know, just crap. But I remember it again seeing Jatman's video and also another video where um, although they had said stuff about the wobble, they were able to get some pretty decent quality off this printer. So then 
I looked at my slicer settings and decided to slow things down um, quite heavily. I slowed everything down to 50 millimeters a second instead of I think the 65 or 70 it was on before and I printed this rocket to see if I could quickly print something and see if I would get all of those issues with vibration that was basically going on before and I was able to print this rocket and it printed pretty damn good. Um, I, I mean not flawless but pretty pretty close if you ask me and a hell of a lot better than the stuff I was getting off of it before. So once I printed that and saw it was successful, I then went ahead and tried out the Bowser again, which turned out fantastic. It is an amazing looking model. Um, there is some issues underneath on the underside, but those are due to supports being removed. So um, either my support settings just weren't good or I just didn't do a very good job of removal. But the actual print quality of this print turned out f phenomenal. It was absolutely amazing, really, really good. Which I then followed up with this Batman bust, oops, which the ear on it is now falling off or Batman's top part of his ear. But the model itself is absolutely amazing. It is crazy good. Um, and it shows that this printer can actually print pretty damn good, even completely stock. I've done nothing to this, except on the slicer settings, slow down the speed. So um, I will get a close up of this for you guys. But yeah, this, this was, I was very, very pleased with this print. So after having this printer now for a few months, I have been able to get some successful prints. I did some other stuff too that I don't no longer have actually, um, but it did a pretty good job actually. You can see a little strand of this blue. This is actually ABS. I did print ABS on this very, very little piece, um, which it did successfully. If you want to do ABS, you should definitely enclose it, which is nice. It's got that whole cube format. Um, but yeah, so this print definitely can hang. I do think that there are very much so better options out there, but this printer potentially could kick some serious butt. Um, some of the plans that I think I will end up doing to it possibly is to secure these by putting some corner frame braces to kind of make these a little bit more unified versus in like just they're not very well connected to each other these aluminum extrusions so I probably will be adding some more kind of L brackets and just corner uh, pieces to make it more of a solid unit. Um, another thing I would like to do is is to 3D print with maybe some like PTG or ABS um, some extension arms for this and then add if nothing else two smooth rods to this side potentially even adding another Z motor and lead screw that would get rid of that um, that shakiness pretty much I would imagine altogether which would allow you to print quicker and just get better prints all around um, I think that's the biggest upgrade that one could possibly do for this machine um, I do like that it has direct drive extruder I don't have very many machines like that I think the only other one I have is the um, Fulger Tech 2020 so that is like one reason that I kind of want to hold on to this but it definitely I, I, it doesn't it doesn't justify though that I do think that this thing was engineered pretty poorly and that this this is not okay this is not acceptable so again if you do get end up deciding to get this printer make sure you're going into it know that you're gonna have to do some upgrades to get this thing rock solid but I do think that having this this 2020 aluminum extrusion setup is really really nice and again if you did want to enclose the whole thing it would be very very easy you could just move in the board on the inside the power supply on the inside and basically add panels with maybe a little bit of attachments but it's it's very well set up to be able to be um, enclosed which is nice so links will be in the description down below if you want to find out more or purchase one for yourself it goes anywhere from 180 to 230 dollars depending if it's on sale or not um, again Far from perfect, it is though a 200 to sub $200 3D printer and you are getting quite a lot of stuff for that. Again, you will either though be printing extremely slow or you will be um, not, you'll be sacrificing quality. Um, if you try to print quick with this, it'll just not work well. So you will have to print slow or again, do some tweaking. But if you are someone like me that doesn't really mind doing hands-on stuff then it seriously has got some potential so let me know in the comments below what you think if you've got any additional questions about this 3d printer i will gladly answer them hope you guys are all doing fantastic and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video peace guys